right, all right. John chapter 8 is where we're going to uh, wrap up this uh, three-part series I've been doing on uh, Stop Lying to Me as we head into uh, this new month uh, of September and really uh, another season not only of school but fall is upon us. Uh, and so as we prepare uh, this time of preaching, I, I just want to uh, do a, a sermon to try to summarize some of the thoughts that uh, I feel the Lord has been giving us during this series and, and uh, give us a little bit of a capstone. Next Sunday, Pastor Don is preaching and is going to be proclaiming the word of the Lord uh, for our first Sunday communion. And uh, so we look forward to hearing from her in a very powerful way. So uh, feel free to spread the word that Pastor Donna is going to be preaching the word of God next Sunday. John chapter number eight uh, is where we will uh, head today. Now, this passage of John uh, is uh, one of uh, the most, I think, clearest expressions of what is at stake when we begin to talk about the commitment we must have to rejecting lies and holding fast to the truth. Uh, clearly, we know that John is uh, the youngest of all the disciples, it is thought, uh, that he followed Jesus when he was a teenager, that John was uh, one of the disciples who were, was in the inner circle of Jesus, meaning that uh, Jesus had the crowds, he had uh, a lot of followers, he had some disciples, and he had even an inner circle, which uh, is one of the ways in which we even uh, imagine our ministry here, that there are groups of us who uh, start out on the, the periphery of crowds, amen, we come with just some curiosity and some questions. And the more we lean in, we move from the crowds to becoming followers. We make a decision that I'm not just going to hang around, but I am actually going to follow the ways of Jesus, thus making us a disciple. And then some of us take a step forward from the crowds to followers to saying, you know what? I feel and I sense God pulling me into a deeper space of ministry. And so I am not just going to remain a follower or a participant in the ministry of Jesus at the way, but I am indeed going to lift up my gifts and my talents and assume some leadership roles. And then the inner circle uh, of Jesus is, is very tantamount to what I would call some of our, our most uh, ministry and pastoral leaders, folks who have really said, you know, I'm going to make uh, sure that I am uh, stepping into my ministry call uh, to serve in a parish or in a parachurch context. I say all that to say that all of us, no matter as uh, where we start, we are always on a journey to deeper intimacy and relationship with God. And as you get closer to God, the truth will work on you, on parts of you, on parts of me that we did not even know we needed some work on. Anybody ever uh, had, a, ha had a part of your, your life that uh, you thought was, was, was kind of okay until the Lord got a hold to it? Lord, I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. The Lord got a hold to it, and, and you, you thought everything was great till the Lord started to poke around and, and do some things. Well, I want you to know that that is indeed uh, the case, uh, what happens when the truth literally invades our lives. Uh, and that's what I hope to uh, hear us uh, reflecting on. John chapter number 8, verse 31. This is what the scripture says. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Uh, verse 33, they answered Jesus, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Verse 34, Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, but the son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. May I, we all say thanks be to God. 
Amen. So we're going to take a few moments and just uh, preach uh, the, the final uh, part of this uh, series on Stop Lying to Me, simply titled, The Truth is on Our Side. The Truth is on Our Side. Come on and let's pray together. God, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And I pray, God, that you will send the power of your spirit that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and even the hearers of your word. And we'll say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Just type that in the chat. The truth is on our side. The truth is on our side. I was struck, uh, certainly for the last couple of weeks, by all of the different things happening in our current events, our, our, our uh, challenges that are literally upon us. I, I, was, I was speaking with a pastor friend of mine, and I said, you know, um, if we were watching a movie, and in this movie, uh, you know, we sit in there and we, we, we kind of know that that th this is a, a, a movie, an apocalyptic kind of movie, and uh, we, we, we're kind of expecting that there's some big trouble that's getting ready to happen. If we're watching this movie and, and we, we see that there's a global pandemic, some of us will be like, wow, man, they, they got to toughen that movie. And then uh, we, we see that the government is not able to, to, to respond in a way that that saves lives. Obviously, you know, sitting in the movie theater, you'd be like, man, this, this, these folk got it hard in this movie. Then all of a sudden, uh, out of nowhere, uh, we, we, we see uh, folks being indiscriminately harmed through protest and social unrest. And then after that, you look up, and if you live here in the Bay Area, you start to see lightning strikes showing up in the movie. <laughs> and the lightning strikes set fires in the movie. And then you know that there's reports that earthquakes and tornadoes and, and now they're calling them fire nados and then a hurricane. Boy, you probably be in that movie and you sitting there like, why don't those folks just leave? <laughs> Amen. Have you ever been to a movie? You'd be like, man, if, if, if that was me, I would just leave. I would just get up out of there. I mean, why are you staying there? I, that's kind of how I feel right now, praise God. You know, I'm kind of feeling like, Lord, why don't you just take us on out of here, amen, or wrap this thing up, do something, because there appears to be trouble on every side. And we've preached a few times since the beginning of the pandemic about the ways in which we as followers of Jesus may have trouble on every side, but we are not thrown into despair. We may be persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We may be cast down, but we are not destroyed. And, and, and that in many respects, many of us, if not all of us, have had to learn how to live in a season of trouble. There was an article in the newspaper that I was reading literally late last night. I think it was in the San Francisco Chronicle. And, and the headline of the Chronicle simply said that we have had to find a way to live with fire. That the Berkeley expert was explaining the wildland urban fire epidemic that has literally, according to the article, left half of California's homes at risk of being set on fire. Gavin Newsom, the governor, says that we've never seen fire of this scale in this part of the state. And it demonstrates the reality, not just the point of view, that climate change and its impact in this state is real. And, 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 and he goes on to say, we did have catastrophic fires like this in the past, but the frequency of fires that have burned hundreds of homes has not been lost on the public. It makes us think, and this is such a fascinating uh, description here that, that I want to uh, ground some of our reflection on this morning. Are we living in a way that is consistent with the natural fires that characterize California? And it just made me think about this question for us. Are we living in a way 
that is consistent with the fires raging around us. That in some respects, part of what has made the fires of this current moment burn so hot is there are lots of kindling, lots of fuel that is easily combustible by the arsonists of our day. That there are people and individuals who are excited about turning serenity and peace into chaos and tragedy. That there are people who find joy in our suffering, who find power in your oppression, who gain strength by trivializing your existence. And all that we are re, uh, uh, trying to survive and, and push through is a result of a diabolical plan of some to keep our eyes focused on the fires and not the ways in which you and I must adjust the way we live in light of that which is happening to us. I mean, I was very, very much moved by some of the responses of many this week, of the NBA players making a decision to shut down their league for a few days. Though some thought it would be more powerful if they did it longer. You know, I, I laughed a little bit because, you know, folks telling the NBA to take days off work and to strike while they going to work themselves. Hey Amen. It's like, you know, these fellas should, should, should give up their careers. And I, I, I agree if you're willing to give up yours. Because how many of you know that a strike only works if everybody strikes? And I do believe a moment may have come where all of us need to think about what does it mean to shut this whole country down in light of all of the fires that are burning around us. That there is a need for you and I to keep reminding ourselves that as Dr. King says, we must see ourselves as firefighters. People who are willing to diffuse and to extinguish the fires that are raging around us. And these fires are made possible or they are fueled by the deceptions and the, the, the ways in which we have individuals continuously fueling falsehoods. The falsehoods, almost like adding wood to the fire. It is and has been a terrifying week for some of us who are politically uh, awoke or inclined or tuned in, watching the way these conventions, particularly this past week, conventions, uh, the Republican convention took place where you saw very plainly on display a president who claims to be for law and order, but the whole convention was an expression of law breaking. <laughs> because you can't claim to be about law and order, but then you yourself breaking the law while you're uttering the words that I'm for law and order, but you doing your, your presidential campaigning in the White House, which is against the law. You got folks sitting there listening to these propaganda speeches. No one is socially distancing. No one is wearing masks. They are violating the very standards that are allowing the fires to rage in our country. And child of God, I want you to know that those type of expressions in the public square are intended to lie to us and sell us a false hood that would make us at ease, as the prophet says in Zion. I love how the prophet says that there are those who cry for peace or who cry that we have peace when there is no peace. 
who cry out that all is well when things are not well. That there is indeed an opportunity and a necessity for you and I to boldly declare in this moment that I refuse to be lied to. I refuse to accept the falsehoods of those who have an investment in me living out a reality that is not grounded in truth. Why? So they can continue to have a leg up in the game of life, in the daily journey and struggle for equality and justice and mercy and love. That in this moment, child of God, the words of Jesus are even more important. Why? Because if the fires will be extinguished, then it will require people who are followers of Jesus to stand up with a sense of clarity about what is happening in the moment and declare unequivocally that I refuse to be lied to. Why? Because I have truth on my side. I have the words and the life and the ministry and the promises of Jesus that stand on the side of those who are reaching for peace and justice and wholeness and healing and righteousness. That truth is indeed on our side. And that's why the words of Jesus in this passage are so powerful, because Jesus is not talking to individuals in this passage who are folks that don't believe or at least claim to believe. There are folk in this passage who had believed in Jesus, but they got some 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 baggage, both cultural and religious that gets in the way of them being able, as Jesus says, to truly be my disciples. Now, this is a fascinating a rhetorical uh, uh, injection that Jesus uses all throughout the Gospels. Listen to this. More than 70 times, Jesus says, I am telling you the truth as a prefix of what he's getting ready to say. You know, Jesus is like, listen, I'm about to tell you some truth right up in here. Jesus is saying, listen, listen, verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, I say unto you, I'm about to be honest with you. How many of you have ever used that kind of a colloquialism? Listen, I'm about to, I'm about to give you some, some, some real good truth right here. It, it kind of makes you think, what have you been telling me all the way up through here? If you got to emphasize right now, you're about to give me some truth. Have you been lying up until this point? Amen. No, that's not the way with Jesus. Jesus, I think, is trying to give you and I a little bit of a cue that what I'm getting ready to say, you need to pay special attention to. And I want you to know that if Jesus is committed and obsessed with telling you and I the truth, then you and I must ourselves then be committed to hearing the truth. We must train ourselves to hear truth. Why? Because we are at times being formed and trained to be comfortable with lies. Amen. We've said it a few times over the course of these sermons that many of us are comfortable believing a beautiful lie rather than an ugly truth. But I love how this African Proverbs, the proverb says, love truth even if it hurts you and hate lies even if they help you. Hmm. That you and I must love the truth even if it hurts and we must hate lies even if they help us. That Jesus is very clear in all of his uh, admonitions to the people that he's speaking to, Jew and Gentile, men and women, teachers and the unlearned, regular people, and even the elected or governmental officials of his day. Jesus says it to all of them consistently, I am about to tell you some truth. Now, it's important to appreciate that in the biblical text, particularly in Hebrew, there is no word for truth. There is no word that translates 
uh, directly or transliterates into truth. But in the, in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, if you will, the word for truth is literally translated as faithfulness or dependability over time. That truth in the biblical context is about that which has longevity and outlasts that which is temporary. That we know truth not through the words that are spoken, but we know truth through the persistence of its reality over time. I hope you're catching this this morning, that, that we, you and I, are only able to know the truth is on our side because we got some history with the truth. We have some history with God. Do I have anybody in, in, this, in this service today that says, I got some history with God, that I, I, I can testify that God has been on my side, that, that, that the things that we hold fast to, the things that we proclaim, the, the, the truths that we hold dear are not things that we've made up just to make ourselves in this day and time feel comfortable. Know that God has always been on the side of those who are oppressed. That is the truth. That God is always drawn near to the brokenhearted. That is the truth. That God loves justice and God loves mercy. That is the truth. That God saves those who may be finding themselves in a horrible pit. That is the truth. That God heals. Do I have a witness in here today? That God saves. That God delivers. That God sets free. That is the truth. And I want you to know, child of God, that we know this truth to be on our side because we got history with God over time. That God did it for me before. And before God did it for me, he did it for my mama and them. And before God did it for my mama and them, he did it for my grandmama and them. And before God did it for my grandmama and them, he did it for my ancestors. And for people I did not know that God's truth will march on. And I want you to have some confidence that even with all the tragedies that are going on around us, truth is on your side. They may try to lie to you and make you believe the subjectivity of their falsehoods, that, that everything that they are doing, the wild schemes and machinations, that those things may have legs. But I want you to know that those who are liars will be bound up in their own falsehoods, uh, while we who know the truth, Jesus says, will be set free. Lord, I wish I had somebody who believed that the truth is working to set you. You and I free. Do you know of any truths that are working right now to make sure your family stays together? Somebody holler, the truth is on my side. Do you know of any truths that are working to keep your mind in perfect peace because you're trusting in the Lord? Somebody holler, the truth is on my side. Do you have any truths that work in your life that are mending your broken heart? Somebody holler, the truth is on my side. Do you know any truths over time that can say God is picking me up and lifting me up and bringing me to a higher place why because the truth is on my side and if you know the truth is on your side then you ought to stand firm put your feet ten toes down as the prophet Nipsey Hussle said and stand on the truth the testimony of what God not only has said but what God has done and I want you to know that this is what truth is. Truth is constant and unchangeable. The truth won't change. But listen to this. As you and I are catching up to the truth. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You and I, we're catching up to the truth. Because some of us, we are being, uh, as the scripture says, Jesus asked God to sanctify them in the truth to sanctify, to consecrate them, to 
every day of their life. Make their lives become more transformed in the image of God. That is the truth. Do I have any honest folk that can say that in my relationships, God is sanctifying me in the truth? In my mind, I'm being sanctified in the truth, meaning that there is an incremental transformation that is happening. And how does that happen? It happens by you rehearsing some truths of God in your mind. I dare you this week to look up in your Bible and or go to Google and just say, these are the truths that I must memorize this week. I must Google what does God have to say about a peace of mind? What does God have to say about me overcoming tragedy? What does God have to say about my body being healed? What does God have to say about the grief in my heart being, being uh, addressed and being resolved? What does God have to say about where I am and what I'm going through if you can research and to extract the truth of God it will be like 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 life to you being injected from the historical consistency of the God of all creation and I want you child of God I want us to not find ourselves faltering because those who are skilled in lies appear to have a better uh, successful promulgation in the public square while we who are trying to wrestle and discern the truth find ourselves often caught between what we know to be true and what we see with our own eyes. This is why Jesus says that if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Every truth that is being made known to you, what is, what is the, 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 the litmus test? The litmus test is, does this truth make me free? Does this truth release me from the bondage of my mind, the bondage of my past, the bondage of my trauma, the bondage of my pain, the bondage of this moment and this season. And that is why it is so important for you and I, as we go through this season, to do the work to check the sources that are often being introduced into our lives as truth, but they are actually falsehoods. If you are using what you're reading on the internet and hearing over the airwaves or over the pulpits or wherever you're getting your information from, if the information is resulting in more bondage, child of God, you ought to ask that person or ask yourself, am I being lied to? Because I refuse to Embrace a lie when the truth sits on my side. I love how one, one uh, writer, when I was reading this week, said there are four ways to discern fake news. And, and, and the first way is to vet the publisher's credibility. I want you to know, child of God, that truth is on our side. Why? Because we vetted the God of history. We vetted the God who said that I am with you. We vetted the God that said I am the way and the truth and the life. We vetted God and God's credibility has not faltered. Do I have a testimony in the house, in the, in the chat, in your home that can look through the rear view of your life and can say that, oh, I, I know I've had some dark days, some hard days, some troubling days. But when I vet the credibility of the God who saved me, when I vet the credibility of the God who healed me, when I vet the credibility of the God who brought me out, I can declare that this God is credible. This God is credible. He has done so much for me 
that I just can't tell it all. But if you give me a little bit of time, I can testify. I can declare and proclaim that God has been good to me. Oh, somebody holler, my God is credible. Oh, the other thing it says is that you must pay attention to the quality and the timeliness. That the way you know something is fake or true is that you ought to pay attention to how it is written and to how it is said and when it comes to pass. Oh my God, I love that the word of God, the Bible says it will not pass away. That not one dot or jittle, not one little scribble of God's word will pass away. That heaven and earth may pass away uh, Donald Trump uh, Barack Obama uh, the Democratic Party uh, the Republican Party uh, the mayor of your city uh, your therapist uh, your boo uh, your family uh, that's all wound up uh, in heaven and earth uh, but I can declare today uh, that God's word uh, will not pass away as a matter of fact, the old school saints used to say that God may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Do I have somebody who can stand and declare that my God is timely? My God is an on time God. He's never late. Just when I thought I couldn't make it, God will step right in and catch me. Lord, I wish I could catch somebody like God caught me. He caught me out of my depression. He caught me out of my sickness. He caught me out of my despair. And he said, I got you. That's how I know that God is not fake. That God is not a figment of your imagination. But truth. Truth uh, is on your side. Uh, oh, it says check the sources uh, and you ought to check the citations. Uh, I love how I know uh, uh, that I can look through the annals of history. Uh, I can look through all the folks that God brought out. Uh, I don't got to go too far. Uh, you say, how do you know God is on your side? Uh, I tell him, just look in the chat. Uh, look in the chat today. Uh, I got a source. Do I have anybody that's been healed? Testify in the chat. Do I have anybody that's been delivered? Testify in the chat. Do I have anybody that's been saved? That is my source. I don't have to look for somebody that I don't know. But I am surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that is telling me to go ahead. Uh, telling me to keep running uh, telling me to keep pushing uh, and the last thing uh, that the, 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 the writer said uh, if I'm trying to check uh, if this is fake news uh, or the truth that is reliable uh, it says to ask some pros uh, ask some experts uh, ask somebody uh, who knows everything uh, that's why I tell you today uh, have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about your problems he'll hear your faintness cry he'll answer by and by oh what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer ask the expert before you go talking to anybody else get down on your knees sit down in a quiet place and ask the expert Jesus what do you got to say about this situation are you on my side if God is with you he's more than the world against you he's on your side he's on our side and if God is for us who can be against us somebody shout hallelujah
The truth is on our side. The truth, the truth, the truth, the longevity of God's faithfulness to you, to me, to us, to your family, to our people, to those who are suffering. The truth is on our side. Oh, and that's why Psalms 37 says, do not fret because of evildoers. Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. Why? Because history has shown that they will soon be cut down like the grass. That lies have a way of disqualifying the liar. And the truth has a way of lifting up the truth teller. Speak the truth at all times. Hold on to the truth. Research the truth. Believe the truth. Know, as Jesus says, that if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. I don't know about you today, but I need to make sure that every day I'm waking up, I'm rehearsing these truths in my mind. I'm rehearsing these principles of eternal faithfulness in my mind. I don't want you and I to be ahistorical about what God not only has said, but what God has done. Oh, I know these times are tough. <clears throat> Seeing the, the amazing Chad Boswick's transition in the last 48 hours or so, the age of 43, has reminded me and all of us, Cliff Robinson, one of our favorite NBA basketball players, transitioned at 53. The killing of Brother Jacob Blake, or the shooting of Brother Jacob Blake, now eight bullets in his body. The, the killing of the three, two or three young white men in Kenosha by a so-called Christian nationalist supporting Donald Trump. Oh, I know there's a lot of bad news out here. And folks are trying to spin these things and make us think that these are either single events not connected to a trajectory of consistent behavior and ideology. I want you to know the truth of the matter is this. This country for its whole existence has warred against the bodies of the marginalized and the vulnerable. But this is also the truth that God has been with us, raising us up over time, demonstrating God's faithfulness, sustaining you and I. We have been grasping and reclaiming the truths of God's word and applying them to our lives in these colliding pandemics, these colliding tragedies. Hold on to the truth discern the truth research and look for the truth in community and this truth will set it will make it will keep you free god i pray right now for the loved ones who are watching i pray god that this truth will be at work among us and among them lord as these fires rage the real fires and the metaphoric fires, God, I pray that the truth, Lord, will be the flame retardants, the, the water that extinguishes these fires ablaze, both in our country and even within ourselves. May we rehearse the truth to ourselves, the truth that reminds us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The truth that reminds us that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. Help us rehearse these truths and promises in our lives. So in real time, we can experience victory that comes only from you. 
and we'll give your name the glory. And we'll give your name the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, come on, somebody, just holler. The truth is on my side. The truth is on our side. The truth, the truth, the truth is on our side. God bless you, people of the way. We love you so much. We love you. We love you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Please be encouraged. Please keep your head and your eyes focused on the one who has shown that time. Consistency and faithfulness is the greatest evidence we have. This God fights with us and for us, and this truth will set and make us free.